Good day, this is Don Toot for Engineering TV. I'm talking to Alex Slido from Efficient Power Conversion, EPC. The topic, of course, is gallium nitride. And the audience for this is a less geeky audience than usual. So I'm going to ask Alan, Alex to just kind of explain what gallium nitride GAN is and what it means. Well, gallium nitride is a crystal. Uh, and it's made out of gallium and nitrogen, as you might guess. And the, the good news is it's actually a better semiconductor than silicon. Uh, the gallium and the nitrogen bond is stronger, and as such it allows you to make devices that are a whole lot smaller than silicon with the same functionality. So that's a point toward reducing the size and thus the cost and um, adding to new applications? Yeah, when you, when you shrink the size of the, of the semiconductor, you can also make things go faster. The device operates faster, it has less resistance, and uh, overall you get a better system performance. How come GAN now? Well, GAN uh, has been around for many years, but only recently have people figured out how to make gallium nitride grow on top of a standard piece of silicon. And because of that, we were able to make gallium nitride wafers that are very inexpensive. And we can produce them in the same factories that produce silicon, so we can get the cost down. And because the dye is so much smaller than silicon, we can actually make them cost less than the silicon counterparts. Because you get better yield. You get better yield, but you also have more dye in a wafer. So with the similar wafer costs and more dye, each dye costs less. And they have the same functionality as the power MOSFET that they replace. All right, so um, do they just fit into the standard applications that we're used to seeing for silicon? Well, gallium nitride devices are much faster and much smaller, so people have to up their skills a bit. Be sort of like if you spent your whole life driving an old Volkswagen and then all of a sudden somebody gave you the keys to a Ferrari and said, we want you to drive this at maximum speed, you'd probably not not uh, do so well at first. So engineers need to increase their their understanding of how to design for very high speed performance and people assembling these devices have to up their game so that they can assemble smaller components which require somewhat more precision. All right so what kinds of can we move beyond the normal applications? What, what sort of things are you seeing people thinking about doing? What are they really doing now? I think that's, that's the most exciting thing that we've seen, is that applications that we never knew existed, and they didn't, uh, now have come out of the woodwork with gallium nitride. And, uh, you know, I just, I'll just give you one example, and that's this pill. This little pill that you take, and it actually is a colonoscopy pill. It's an x-ray machine inside a little tiny tablet. And when you take it, it actually takes an x-ray of your entire colon while transmitting it wirelessly to a wristband and then it's inexpensive enough that you don't even have to recover it afterwards. That wouldn't be possible with silicon. And that's just one of several examples. Besides the pill, we've also talked about LiDAR, we've talked about several other kinds of new applications. Can you go into some depth about that? Yeah, I think gallium nitride is going to change the way we live, uh, you know, whether it be a medical application like the colonoscopy pill or autonomous vehicles, which depend on LiDAR, which depends on GAN. Another thing is, is just cell phones. Uh, you know, as we have this Internet of Things, we're going to require enormous increase in bandwidth of our wireless uh, uh, gadgets like our cell phones, and that's going to require gallium nitride instead of silicon. Uh, and, and a third one is wireless power. We have wireless information. Why do we need our power to be in a power cord? Nobody likes the power cord. And in the next five to ten years, we'll see first our cell phones and our laptops wirelessly powered, and then we'll go to things like lamps in our home and TVs on the wall and our cars, and we'll go to a wireless world, not just for information, but also for energy. How much blue sky is this and how much is almost available now? Well, certainly the wireless power is about to explode on the market. You see thousands and thousands of places that already have it and many phones, I think 150 million phones will be built this year with wireless receivers in them. Um, in terms of the LiDAR systems, you already see them today in those mapping cars that are going down the road and you'll see a spinning disk. 
uh, but they're in every single autonomous vehicle and pretty soon you'll see a lot more of those. And in terms of the, the uh, wireless uh, transmission of information, 4G LTE networks right now are very aggressively including gallium nitride in their systems and the 5G networks which we'll see in about three to five years will have maybe five or ten times as much gallium nitride in each system. Suppose somebody wants to find out more than just this short video. Where, where can they go to find the information? Well, you can go to our website, which is uh, www.epc-co.com, or you could uh, get one of our books. Uh, EPC has written several textbooks on the subject, uh, GAN Transistors for Efficient Power Conversion, uh, we've also written the only textbook uh, to date on wireless power uh, and this is a very helpful one for anybody that wants to start getting into the wireless power world. Uh, we have Chinese translations of our textbook uh, and our website is filled with uh, both academic articles and very practical guides on how to get started. Excellent. Alex, thank you. Thank you, Don.